Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Living Testimony, a show dedicated to the body of Christ. Before I get started, I would like to give honors to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I am Sister Maxine Byers. I'm from Abundance Rock Ministry. I'd like to give thanks to my wonderful pastor and husband, Pastor Clarence Byers. Praise God. And all those from Abundance Rock Ministry, God bless you all. Thank you for the support and those that are tuning in. Today's show, I will be interviewing a wonderful God evangelist, Ranisha Jackson praise God. I pray that someone be able to receive a word. May someone be able to be blessed. Amen. I'm Evangelist Renisha Jackson. That's my sister in Christ has already um, yes. introduced me and um, I reside in Perry, Perry, Georgia. Uh, so excited about sharing the gospel, sharing and witnessing what God has done in my life. Yes. And I thank you so much. Witness. You know, I always feel as a witness, Yes. As a believer or, or whoever you are in the ministry, everyone should have some type of a testimony. You mm -hmm. never know how your testimony can help someone else. Yes. You never know what you have been through and how the Lord had changed you and how he had saved you and everything else can help someone else that has fallen, someone else that want to get to know who Christ is. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's our job is to give our testimony, let people know, yeah, I went through that. I used to do them things. Yeah, I listen, I know what you're talking about, but this is who I am. And it was nobody but God. Yeah, hallelujah. Ask how long you've been in the ministry? Oh, wow. I've been six years that wow. I've been in the ministry. I almost, I stepped foot into it. Um, in the beginning so i mean i i didn't grow up I, okay i didn't grow up in church i wouldn't say i didn't go i didn't have a solid foundation my mother you know we was the type of family that would go to church every yeah. now and then you know maybe it's holiday came up hey, yeah. i never really got the the word in me growing up as a child and um so me growing up i i never thought that god would be using me in mm -hmm. any form of fashion in ministry, never yeah. ever seen it come in my life. Glory, hallelujah! Oh, so my, my grandmother was the woman of God in the family, she was the one keeping the family together, yeah. powerful praying woman of God. And so, my mother, she lived her life, she party or whatnot. She, you know, she wasn't on that path, so naturally, I went the same way as I got older. There's a lot of influences, um, that I fell into, and yeah. um. Not knowing what I know now that that's how the enemy works is that a lot of times with our children, Satan is already on attack from the time yes. we're born. Yes. From birth. Oh, you know, he yeah. already has the assignment to deter. And so he was on the assignment for me since I came into the world. Thank and you. so, of course, those people were sent my way uh, that introduced me to the different things like, you know, smoking marijuana. Um and I knew these things were wrong because the Bible also talk about we, we got a conscience, you know. Yes. You naturally got a conscience of what's right and wrong. Amen. I didn't have to know the word of God to know that smoking this was, was wrong. I did it, of course, because I, I didn't know God like that. I was in my flesh and I allowed the peer pressure uh, of other people to influence me into taking that path down that road. Yes. And so, And I'm saying this natural stuff because I want people to understand that it was always a spiritual setup behind it. Yes. Jeremiah 29, 11, it tells us that God knows the plans that yes. he has for our lives. Yes. And he has to prosper us, to Ooh, give us Jesus. hope and a future. Yes. And so Satan don't want you to know who you are. Oh. He, don't want you to know your he don't want you to know your identity. Yes. So what he do is he throw all these darts in the way to keep you from knowing who you really are. You are. What yes. you were created to be. He said he right. knew you before you was even in your yes. mother's womb. Yes. We all have a purpose. We it's are. just knowing who you are. God don't make a mistake he, he never not. made a mistake he said let's make man in the image of us my lord you know not the image of the things that we see in this world Jesus christ came to save those that are lost you know, the lord told me the other day he says seek me while i'm still here yeah don't wait until he's gone because once he pull his spirit back you're too late you're too late seek him while he's here yeah. now yeah. to be found yeah. all you have to do is call on him just yes. call on him, allow him to come into your life. Yes. If he could change me and my sister that's online, he could change anybody. And, and the scripture tells us we all have sinned. We all yes. have been through something. Oh. We're not sitting here saying that we're better than anybody. We're not sitting here acting like we're better than anybody. We're here to help those 
out there that is watching know that the Lord is waiting on you. But let me tell you how God works because when God got a calling on your life, we can ask <laughs> Jonah what happened. When you want to be disobedient, you don't want to do what God he yes. did. Take up your life to draw you. But it be for yes. this is what happened to me. Living my life, I was a true party girl. I mean, actually, in high, you know, I'm still full of zeal now, but I do I'm I'm for Jesus now. For the Lord, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. People love me because I was like, come on, you know, I, I had <laughs> own passion, but it was on the other side. And when God calls you, he calls you because of who you are. The energy that you have inside of you, that same energy that you had when you was in the world, yeah. he wants you to use that energy for him, yeah. for Christ. <laughs> That's why I be myself, my authentic self, because these are gifts that God has given us. Like you say, he just wants us to use it for his glory. The same yes. deals I tell people, if you was like that in the world, don't come over here and get all scared and, you know, yeah. timid. Yeah. You were so outspoken and you use that for the yes. glory of God. Don't get over here and let the enemy make you fearful to not speak up or not be that person. Yeah. That, that's your personality. God made you how he made you, but yes. the enemy has tainted who you were and Ooh. used it for bad, but God don't use it for good. And yes, so he is. Why, you know, I just be myself. <laughs> Me being in the world, I drew a lot of people because of that. And God, you know, I I just, I needed to be slowed down. I, I have to say I need to be slowed down. Most yeah. of us living in sin, we full-fledged. We cannot yeah. be stopped. We, we got to hit rock bottom or we got to hit a roadblock or we got, we have to. This yeah. is God has to humble us. He, he It has to stop. Yeah. So in, order, in, in order for God to reach you, if you're not listening, he will do something. Yeah. He'll make you sit. He'll yeah. find out some people wind up getting locked up. Yeah. Some people wind up getting sick. Some people yeah. wind up going through some crazy things and not understand why they're going through it. But yeah. if God is calling, yeah. listen to what the Lord, he doesn't expect you to come in and just sit there and keep that seat warm. Yeah. He expects us all. I know not everybody's meant to teach. Yeah. I know not everybody's meant to be a pastor. You have to be called to be a pastor. You have yeah. to be called to be evangelist. But everybody can witness on yeah. what the Lord has done for them, on how he has changed them, how there's something. You know, the scripture said, don't be ashamed of me because if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you're ashamed to say what I had delivered you from, then I will be ashamed of you. So we have to let people know that yeah. it was the Lord that saved us. It was yeah. the Lord that pulled us from them streets. It was the Lord that took that alcohol away from us. It was the Lord that healed our body. It was the yeah. Lord that lifts us up. It was the Lord that delivered me from depression and low self-esteem and fear and confusion and all this other stuff. It was nobody but God that did it. I couldn't do it myself. You know, the yeah. things that we're dealing with in this world is spiritual. When we can accept who we are in Christ and pick up our cross yeah. and walk with the Lord with our head up high, knowing yeah. we serve a wonderful God. Yeah. We serve a God that is on time. We serve a God that is a deliverer. We serve a God that is a healer. We serve a God that is a way maker. Yeah. No matter yeah. however you look at it, we serve a God that sits up so high and looks down so low. It don't matter yeah. who you are. You can be a criminal. You can be a drug addict. You can be a prostitute. You can be an alcoholic. You can be whoever you are. Yep. God can save anybody. With my The way that God had to stop me was a relationship. I know there may be a lot of people's story, um, but for some reason, uh, a lot of us tend to seek for that missing piece, that love and things like that. And that's yeah. one of the number one ways that the enemy can always take you out is presenting to you some man, yes. some woman. And for me, I grew up, I didn't have my father in my life. So you already know what it's going down at. Yeah. And um, I didn't make the best decisions growing up. I didn't have that particular role model or, you know, I, I look for that. And so after having my first child at 18, I ended up having another uh, child three years later uh, with this particular relationship was going to be the make it or break it. I went through so much in this relationship. It became very verbally abusive. Uh, then it became physical. It became so physical. And I just kind of skim on through to the point where this was the last little bit, because before it got to this point, I had just started trying to really seek God. And, and yes. you know, the enemy, he's like, no, it ain't going down like that. So this just, you know, but I, I needed to really let go. So I still was holding on to, um, the child father that was not good for me. You know, I'm trying to come out of the street life and club and life. And so I was still doing that. So the relationship got so bad to the point where, um, 
on the way to work on this last particular day before things really shook up was he locked me in the car door. He was supposed to be dropping me off at work in my car. That's what we did. He didn't have a car, so he dropped me off in my car yes. and come and get me. But I was so over him. I wanted him to leave. I had a hard time getting him out because he was one of them type that I ain't going nowhere. You know, <laughs> yeah. he didn't have a job. What's, I'm paying yeah. bills, but he ain't going nowhere. So I'm like, yeah. oh God, help me get this man out my house because yeah. all the police do state law things. They can't be, you know, can't put him out. They've been there so long. And I'm like, okay, I'm stuck. And so this particular situation, we got into a little, you know, disagreement or whatnot. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to take you back home and whoop your behind, pretty much is what he said. So he locked the car door, pulled off, and I started just panicking because I'm like, oh, my God. I'm leaving my job. I'm supposed to be clocking in. Look like I'm not going to make it. He's going to take yeah. all the way back home. So I started pushing on his shoulder, trying to unlock the door, trying to get out. And I just pushed and I pushed him and he took his arm and boosted, it hit me in my mouth. All I saw was like a whole bunch of blood just come down out of the dashboard. And I'm just like, I've never been hit like this before in my life. So I'm like, blood, like, oh my God, it was all, my hair was kind of like this in the bob. So it was all on my hair. It was a mess. And I was able to hit the unlock button because he didn't, I don't even think he thought that he hit me that hard. Yeah. Uh, all of that. So I was able to hit the unlock door and get out and run down the, the alley. And he was basically chasing me with the car. Now I'm just running. By the grace of God, I thank God, whoever this man was, he pulled mm -hmm. up and he saw me blood all over my dress. He said, ma'am, are you okay? And I'm just crying. And he was like, told, he told him, don't come nowhere near her. I'm calling the police. And I'm like, thank you, you know, and I'm standing out there, police pulls up, they, you know, long story short, they handcuff him, they take me, put me in the back of an ambulance, check my mouth, I got cuts in my mouth and everything, but it wasn't deep enough for stitches, but they examined everything, made sure that I was okay. Yes. So, um, I had to get a ride home from the hospital because my car was out there and unfortunately they towed my car. So yes. I had to find a way home. My, my life just went down. I'm telling you, like, it, it reality hit me because I, 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 my mom went through the same thing. When I tell you, yes. generational curses, she yes. went through the abuse. I saw her jaw bones being broken, Lord, broken in her eyes, rib cage punched into the point she couldn't walk. How the ambulance? I seen it growing up as a little girl. I yes. saw it on the wall, and I'm looking at my life. I looked at myself in the mirror, and I said. This is not the life I wanted. I knew oh, I saw my mother go through stuff like this. And yes. I always told myself I would never let a man. Yes. And yeah. here I am in the mirror with a busted, swollen lip. I, it was so swollen that I didn't even look like who I was. I, when you get hit like your face, I don't know if you have a bitch. You don't look like Yeah, that. no. Yes. And I'm looking at oh. my I'm looking at my two babies and they looking at me like, mom, you know, because they don't, they look like, I don't know who she is. She, her face look funny. And it looked just yeah. bad. And I'm like, reality hit me. It was very humbling experience. I don't wish they don't know about it, but I, I saw my pal. I saw yeah. my pal. All that living that fast life party and thinking that this kind of thug is good. That kind of man is good. Look yes. at his face. Look yes. at his face. So it's I'm, not worth it. It's not worth it. I got my two babies. I don't want them to experience what I experienced and whatever it takes. I need help. I cry like I need help. Yes, I, need help. I don't know what to do. For some reason, this sinful passion in me is going towards the wrong way and yes. it's like controlling. I need help. So Jesus. I end up taking a few Damn. days off of work. And then I when I went back to work, my mouth had on went down enough to not be so noticeable. But yes. a few people was able to see that something was wrong. I didn't really say much. I was kind of embarrassed, you know. And um, Lord, I to this day I thank this girl, and she every time I tell this testimony, I get tear eyed. But um, she knows who she is, and she works with me. She said, Renisha, she said, I've been telling you to come to church. And you know me, I've been pushing you all. She said, I've been telling you, she said, you need to come to church. To Jesus. I said, Lord, Hallelujah. I said, Church. I said, you know what? But when you ain't got no other option, when yes. you have no other way to look for, you look up Ooh, him. Jesus, so, with oh, my help. I said, Thank okay, you, I was humble enough. Finally, I yeah, had to sure. broken. I had to, I, I mean, it, it happened, but I, 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 I had to get to the place where I, I 
had to know I need. I need yes. God. And yeah. so I went to church that night with her. And the experience that I had changed my life. Ooh, that Jesus. man of God that preached that night. Thank you, Lord. And then at the end of service, he called us up for prayer. He uh, he began to prophesy to me. And um, I never experienced this type of, you know. Yeah, that's prophecy. how it works. Yes. Is he really speaking to, you know, so I was pinning on the head. He was like, yes. you know, he was like, God is going to use you. He said, yeah. you got to know your life to preach the gospel. I'm like, Yes, up the dance floor. I was really intoxicated, and he and he got the nerve to stand before me and tell me, "I'm going to." That's how the Lord do it. I'm like, okay, you know. So he's like, "But you got to do." He said, "You got to forgive," and that when it see God know that that spot right there how to get you. Like he did the lady at the well. He knew what was gonna get him. He said, "The men you've been sleeping with." Neither one of them was just shoot. Like, you know? See, he know how to reach you. He know that yes. broken spot. It. He know that soft spot. that that gonna yes. wow you. Yes, yes. He said you gonna have to forgive. He said God got a man of God for you. That's Ooh. gonna be, he's, he's gonna be able to love you and things like you know. And I'm like man of God. So he <laughs> brought me and he know that this longer than me was about the relationship problem. He hit it right on the head. Yes, you are gonna have to forgive because I had hatred in my heart against. Him at that point. my face and all that, it drew hatred. I was so mad at him. I hated him, you know. Yes. And he told me, he said, You're gonna have to forgive. And I said, Well, I I mean, I started crying because I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Because yeah. I have so that's, that's 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 one of the main thing of being in Christ is knowing how to forgive. Yes. You can't move and you cannot move until you can forgive. You gotta learn how to forgive um things that happened to us in our past, yes. happened to us when we was a child, happened yes. to us in a relationship, happened to us with our family, yep. other people around us. We can't have nothing in our heart when you ask God to forgive your sins and He forgives you, He expects you to forgive others as well. So we have to be able to forgive, regardless. I trust and believe people listen. You are giving a testimony that, that really touched my heart because I've been through the same thing. You know, I've been through an abusive relationship and everything else. And to know that I had to forgive, you know, but then when I did, I felt like a weight was coming off my shoulder, you know, and then I had to forgive myself for allowing myself to go through the things that I went through. You know, when you let it go, you got to let it go. When you speak on it, you speak on it to give a testimony. You don't speak on it because you're dwelling in it. You know, you got to let go of that so you can move on with your life and be the woman or man of God that God created us to be. And he told me, he said, you're going to have to forgive. And I'm like, you know, and uh, I cried, I cried. And I just, whatever happened, it had my spirit leaping for the rest of that night. I went home, I couldn't sleep. Yeah. I ended up waking up the next day and I went and bought my first Bible. Oh, um, praise the Lord. I was like, I went and bought my first Bible ever. <laughs> and I was ready. It, it, something was stirred up in me. And um, I bought my first Bible, got my name engraved on, and I was excited because I was like, I want more of that. I need more of that. And that's how it is. You want more. <laughs> I tell you, that's the best thing you can do. You're going to want more. I Listen, I know with me, I wanted more. I still want more. I still want to do more. I know the Lord tells me to humble myself. Wait, 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 wait. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to do too much. Just wait until it's your time. Yeah. But it's like, you want to do more. I want to shout out. I, if I can just pull people in by their, by their hand and be like, listen, come, come, come feel the presence of the Lord. Allow the Lord to touch you. Allow the Lord to do it. I would, listen, if they let me do it, I'll do it. Yeah. I, I know we can't force people to come in. They got to want to, just like how you yeah. got to the point that, you know what, let me see. What, what could you possibly lose? And you allow the Lord to touch you. It is real. The minute you get filled with his spirit, it is real. So them days that you feel like you by yourself, you'll never be by yourself. Because the scripture said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And so them days that you might even feel like you're alone, because there's times you feel like you're alone. No, you're not alone. Those are the days that he wants you to get on your knees and pray. That's or he wants you to study. You know, whenever you feel like I don't have this now, he said, I will supply all your needs. Ooh. So he'll make sure you have all the stuff that you need. That's and also he just wants us to be ready. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be ready. He wants us to be cleaned out, delivered from all the things that was holding us back, delivered from all the things that we used to do and just be humble That's and then wait on the Lord. I began to just started, you know, seeking him. I began to seek. Yes. 
the kingdom of God first and all of his righteousness. And truly, Ooh, as a Christian man, when you really apply the word of God to your life, because that's the only way it will work, you got to be doers of the word yeah. and I get to seek him first. And everything seek him first. To, you know, fall, you know, follow behind that. You know, I begin to attend church regularly. You know, I began to grow in the word of God. And as I yeah. began to feed myself more and more, my desires began to change. You know, and I went through the, the, the you know, the, the, the denying of self, you know, yeah. through that, you know. And it was some times where I, I felt that thing because it was like, it was a battle. Yes. <laughs> my flesh and, this, and my spirit, you know, and God, you know, challenging me to give up those things that were sinful uh, yeah. and this thing to him. And that's, that's something I had to just really come to terms with that I gotta give up the, the club life. Yeah. I have to give up the club life. And with the I had to forgive my uh child's father, which I end up doing that. I had to. So this is the steps that he was taking me through. And the more, like you said, the more you submit, the more I continue to grow yes. And, yes. and to really learn who I was in Christ Jesus. And um, I begin to be transformed. You yeah. know, I promise what Romans 12 that says, be ye not. Train on um, be not be not conformed to the world. Yes, be transformed yes. by the of your mind. And yes, yes. Because that's a, it's like your whole. It's like everything inside of you start changing. You yes. start. You don't want to do those things no more. What it's about? You can't have all of this word of God. You know, God has gave you all this word. You know, and you so much. You know, <laughs> it's like so much. On and you just sit on it. You ain't spreading the gospel to no one you're not going yeah. out there and, and for me i carry this constant grieving in my spirit because knowing that if you don't accept yes. jesus as your lord and savior Ooh, the consequences behind that yeah. it causes me to be like lord jesus yeah. and i just got to tell you about the man yes. that jesus christ Ooh, you don't know. have to you don't have to go down the path of destruction you don't know you don't thrown into hell oh, hallelujah. you rejected you can you can accept him today you can receive him today and today right now in the mighty name of oh, jesus, jesus. You can, oh, hallelujah. like you said, why he may be found today. Yes. Today, he said, choose ye this day. Okay. This Jesus. day. Because the, the, the day you hear the, the day you hear the voice of the Lord, the scriptures say, call it not so hard. Because you don't know when it might oh, be. Oh, hallelujah. Else, you don't know when God might take his grace off of your yes. life and say, you know what? And that's going to be it. And that's it. That it's that's great. So how it, can it, on that, Jesus, hallelujah! Somebody about Jesus that saves, yes, Savior that saves. She yes. the reason that people, Jesus, he going to hell when he came and he yes. gave up his life for yes, us. So he wouldn't have to go. That yes. reason, that's a fire that burns in me. Yes, I got to tell you about a man named Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Ooh, what is his name? And yes, I was Lord. to say that I was in my mess, but I am a proud and I'm oh, thankful God now that God saved me and smashed yes, me out of the hands of the enemy. Yes. I am very thankful for that, and I will forever testify. Nobody but Jesus that has yes. delivered me, that has healed me, that has strengthened me, that has guided me, that has made me who I am today. And I'm not ashamed to That's say it. that I am a woman of God and I pick up my cross. Yes. No matter what comes my way, I trust in the Lord because I know Ooh. he is my everything. I cannot do it without him. I That's cannot it. go nowhere without him. I cannot Ooh. sleep without him. I cannot speak without him because he, I think about Ooh. what I was going through and what I've been through in the world and stuff. And I sit back and I look at who I am today. And when he has opened up doors for me and he made ways for me, I'm like, Lord, you did this for me. Wow. You didn't have to do it, but you Whoa. did. You did it because you love me. Make and a lot of people don't understand it. The walk, when you walk with Christ is more than just trying to um, say, oh, I'm just a woman of God. Oh, I'm an evangelist. Oh, I can right. do this. And I, no, no, it's more than that. It's my relationship Whoa. with the Lord. When I know when I'm crying, he's wiping away my tears saying, baby girl, I got you. I got your back. Don't worry about it. If someone looking at you the wrong way, don't worry. I got you. You Listen, we said it before, Ooh. greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. So I'm not worried about what what comes at me, I just know who got my back. That's it. You know, and that's the wonderful thing about it. So when you, when you are, for those that are, that are still out there in the world, when you come into Christ, don't just know that when you come into Christ and you receive him, he has you, he will be with you. You just got to yeah. hold on. Don't yeah. let go. And even if you fall, 
we're gonna fall. You're gonna make mistakes. Don't yeah. give up on Christ because He won't give up on you. We leave Him. He don't leave us. That's he right. don't know it. He waits for us to come back yes. over and over again, over and over again. So as you take this walk, you might stumble and fall, but get back up. Get Jesus. back up, continue to get back up until you're able to walk Ooh. on your own. Just like a newborn baby. When a newborn baby start walking, he yeah. tumbles, he falls, but he gets back up. So you're a newborn baby when you come in. You're a babe when you come in. You got to crawl before you You want the Lord, the more he's going to want to use you. The more you want to do for the Lord, the more he's going to use you. The same way you feel about God is the same way he feels about you. If you love your Lord and you want to scream and shout and let the whole world know that you love, he's going to let people see that he loves you too. And so he's going to continue to protect you. You're going to open up some doors for you. Open up doors that no man can shut. He'll close doors that no man can open. He'll pull people out of your life and bring new people into your life. It's just the idea knowing that what you want. So I always say God created us with a mind to make our own decision. Mm -hmm. You know, who you going to serve? The scripture said, you have to choose. Yes. Which way you got to go? Christ is coming back and he's coming back for a church. And I'm not talking about the four walls. He's coming back for the body. The body is a church. Your body is a church yes. without no spots or blemishes. So you got to examine yourself, know who you are. Those that's in Christ that say they're um, children of God and those that are not get to know who the Lord is. If the yes. Lord can save us, he can do the same for you. He can and do the God. same for you. Praise God. God. So I wanted to ask you if for those that is watching, is there anything that you can say to those? Again, this show is not just for the believers, it's for the backsliders. Yes. It's for those that are lost, those that are seeking the Lord. You know, is there anything that you can help them, give to them to help bring them in, allow them to know who Christ is? Yes. yes. I was pretty much saying, knowing that Jesus, He don't leave us, we leave Him. Yes. And with you knowing that. We have such a loving God that yeah. wants you to, uh, he wants you to prosper. He wants you to have that, that life, that life more abundantly. He's, he's standing there. He's waiting on you to come back to him and, yeah. and embrace you knowing that that's what you have compared to the world. The yeah. world don't love nobody. The yeah. world don't even know true love. Yeah. You know? And just knowing that alone, that no matter what you've done, no matter how far you have slid in back out there, that you can come back. Yes. If you still got breath in your body, oh hallelujah. Always Jesus. come back and yes. he'll receive you. Yes. That's like the prodigal son. Mm, hallelujah. He'll receive you with celebration. With yes, love. So. the angels in heaven rejoice. Well, oh, yes. come back to God. It doesn't yes. matter what your family members got to say. It doesn't matter yes. what those friends got to say. You got the whole heavens backing you. Ooh, Jesus. You come back yes. to your Lord and say. Yes. And don't yes. let condemnation seek into your mind. Because that's Lord. nothing too hard for God. Yes. So Lord, you nothing. Out there, you got yourself tangled back up into something. Yes, Lord. I promise you, God can break those chains. Yes, God can, can deliver you. God can restore you. God yes, Lord. Can heal you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. The one that has created you and knows the plan He has for your life. There is nothing too hard. I know what it feels like. Yes, you're in a hard spot, the wrestling, and you just. It seems like it's easier. Yes, to give up because yes. the cross can get heavy sometimes. Yes. Let me be yes. honest. Carrying yes. your cross can seem like a, a burden sometimes. Yes. But that's why he said, cast your cares. Cast Ooh, your Jesus. Cares. For yes. I come for you. Yes, we ain't Lord. built to carry all of this stuff. All yes. of this stress. All of these worrying. That's why we got to learn how to toast that thing. Ooh. All that matters. And remember the matters. authority. Remember the authority that he told us he's, he's given us. Ooh, in. He said, behold, I have given you authority. Yes. I'm yes. giving you power to yes. tread over serpents Ooh, and, and over all the enemy. And yes. nothing by enemy. I'm not going to say nothing. Enemy yes. you. So you Glory got to be who you are. 
You got to get that bold mentality. Jesus. When you walk in with Christ, you can have a defeated mentality because he did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love. Yes, yes, Lord. Lord. Ooh, Jesus. So when you yes, against you, when he tries to make you backslide, when he tries to make you throw in the towel, put your mind back on Christ. The ones that struggling, listen, remember you got authority over the enemy. He only can do what you allow him to do. Lord, thank you for tuning in to a living testimony. God bless you all. Amen.